House of Destiny Family Church, taking you to the next level. The faithful God, let us just do a short prayer and then we'll start. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that we are in our midst. Is a local little where two or three are gathered. Babo Namanja na uzubu kona. We are here to praise you, to lift you up. Babo Namanja, and we trust you, Babo Namanja, to break our shackles, but that are keeping us bound, free. Ge kamalga Jesu sakbonga sibongo uto ni we will move. Babo Namanja, as you desire. We are in this place, oh God, we need you. We are here for you. Ge kamalga Jesu, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to start our declarations this morning. The word of God says you shall decree and decide a thing and it will be established in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is with that confidence that we do declarations this morning. For our country, you will say after me, we declare that South Africa is a blessed nation. A nation after God's heart. In Jesus' name, we declare that God-fearing, righteous leaders are in authority and they lead with divine wisdom. We declare that God is perfecting all issues of concern in our nation. We declare open doors for a great prayer revival and spiritual awakening over South Africa to cause a deep hunger for righteousness to fill the land and return this nation to the sovereign lordship and dominion of Jesus Christ. Let us thank God for our thriving country. We praise you. We worship you, Father. We're going to declare now for our pastors and leaders. We declare that the Spirit of the Lord is upon our pastors and leaders. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, we declare that they give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We declare open doors of supernatural anointing and new revelations backed up by signs and wonders. Let us praise God for our pastors and leaders. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, God, for our pastors and leaders. We're going to declare now for our church, we declare that in the year of open doors, God's purpose and vision for house of destiny is accomplished with speed. Lives are transformed. Communities are impacted. And God's kingdom is established on earth in Jesus' name. We declare that HOD is a church of champions. HOD is a house of prayer and a mountain of God's presence. In the year of open doors, we declare that Seeking God's kingdom and its righteousness is our priority. And HOD will lack no good thing. We decree and declare we are filled with the knowledge of God through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. We live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing Him in every way, bearing fruits in, in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. 
We declare that we walk in radical faith. We walk in radical obedience. And we walk in the reverential fear of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that in 2024, HOD is experiencing new dimensions of God's power and explosive church growth. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in this church. Miraculous healings and deliverances shall be common in our midst. In Jesus' name, let us thank God for church growth. Hallelujah. We thank you. We worship you, Heavenly Father. We're going to declare now for HOD members, that is you and me, we declare that we have a kingdom first mentality and we serve God with humility diligence and excellence we declare that in the year of 2024 we will worship God and our lives will be God's sanctuary we are the carriers of God's presence and supernatural restoration and advancement is our portion in Jesus name we decree and we declare any mountain or sea or sea of sickness, any mountain or sea of lack, debt and poverty, mountain of stagnation and unfulfulness and stubborn strongholds standing before us will tremble and leap like rams and the sea shall flee at the presence of our Lord we declare God's sevenfold restoration of the years that were eaten by the locusts people shall marvel at the splendor of God's resurrection power we praise God as HOD members. Hallelujah. Sevenfold restoration is our portion. We declare now for our families. We declare that all HOD families are blessed and living under an open heaven. We declare all HOD marriages are experiencing heaven on earth marriages. Families are knitted in love and united in Christ. Our families are students of God's word. And our prayer altars shall be kept burning. We declare that throughout 2024, our families shall experience a divine order of unlimited breakthroughs automatic opening of iron gates to our freedom and visibility in jesus name come on let's praise god for our thriving families in the name of jesus we thank you lord we're gonna declare now for dkz and our youth in 2024 we declare that our children and young people are passionate and on fire for God. God has poured out His Spirit upon their lives. Our sons and daughters will prophesy and our young men will see visions in Jesus' name. We declare that they are firmly established in God's Word. And they are for signs and wonders. Like Joseph, God's hand is upon them. And they prosper in all they do. They are destined for great exploits. 
and excellence is their portion in Jesus' name. Let us praise God for our kids. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, that no one, and I mean no one, will look down on their youth in Jesus' name. Join me for personal declarations. I declare that in the year of open doors, my life is fully consecrated. As hallelujah, my life is fully consecrated. As a living sacrifice unto God. My mind is renewed and transformed by the word of God. I am an addicted lover, worshiper, and a doer of God's word. His word has final authority in my life. I declare that I walk in the fullness of my inheritance in Jesus' name. I declare that I walk into open doors of power and authority and therefore yokes are broken. No man, no man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. I walk in supernatural wisdom and like Daniel and Joseph I shall be sought after to solve complex problems in Jesus name. I am a reservoir of innovative ideas. I am a reservoir of innovative ideas. I am God's kingdom financier. Therefore, wealth and riches are in my household in Jesus name. We thank you Lord that in the year of open doors uncommon favor is my portion. God's blessings are pursuing me. They are overtaking me in Jesus name. God is my shield and my glory. I decree and I declare that I meditate, I believe, I confess, and I practice the word of God. I have the zeal for the kingdom. I am the righteousness of God. I am God's elect. I am God's masterpiece. His workmanship of grace and love. I am blessed and highly favored. We decree and we declare we are what the word of God says we are. We have what the word of God says we have. And we can do what the word of God says we can do. We have declared it and it is established in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for open doors this morning. Jehovah, evuli minyango, umu 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 Jehovah, evuli minyango, sitage. Help me declare it, say Uma O Jehovah, Evoli Minyango, Umu Jehovah, Evoli Minyango, we believe in for open doors, yeah. Umu Jehovah, Uma Yena, O Betamanda, O Pesuwa Kobo. Chokani, 
Ramanj. Ndi ngi energy as a state of the art. Boba siangen. Boba siangen. Boba siangen. Hi, Bobo. Boba siangen. Boba siangen. Boba siangen. Hi, Bobo. Shokani. Ukulile siangen. Trust 
welcome to House of Destiny Family Church. Please join us for our Sunday church services. Our first in-person service starts at 8 a.m. and our second in-person service starts at 11 a.m. The service is also streamed live on our YouTube channel at 8 a.m. Our children's ministry also runs at the same time as in-person services. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, House of Destiny Family Church. And remember to also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and X. You're encouraged to attend Destiny Connect groups, popularly known as Home Cells, every Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. online. Connect groups meet virtually three times a month and during the first Friday of the month. We gather at the church as part of prayer and fasting week. To join one of the Destiny Connect groups, kindly contact the church office. Our monthly prayer and fasting starts on the first week of the month. More details will be sent by the church office. Please join our Power Hour prayer sessions every Saturday morning from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Teens aged 13 and above are invited to join our dedicated teen service every Sunday as well as teen Fridays held once a month. Please be on the lookout for the following upcoming church events. We have Destiny Men's Online Masterclass themed The Power of Mastery on the 11th of April starting at 6.30 p.m. This will be hosted by Pastor Morsa and facilitated by Jake Stebe. And Destiny Men will be having a men's camp from the 26th to the 27th of April at Camp Discovery. The cost is only 1,000 Rand per person and this covers meals. Please register at the resources desk. On Sunday the 28th of April, we have church building offering. This will be driven through DCGs as per usual. Together, let's contribute towards our vision. To stay informed about church happenings and to make purchases from the Resource Center, please remember to download or visit the church app. The House of Destiny Family Church app is accessible on both Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Additionally, you can listen to sermons directly through the app and stay updated on the latest church events. Our WhatsApp broadcast messaging is strictly for sending one-way broadcast messages from the church to you. This WhatsApp number must be saved in your contacts for you to be able to continue receiving these church messages. All our online meeting details are sent on the day of the meeting. If you are not receiving church communication, please send updated contact details to the church office admin at houseofdestiny.co.za or WhatsApp 082-594-9988. If you'd like to communicate with the church or report on any of your life events, including weddings, counseling or bereavements, please send an email to the church office at admin at houseofdestiny.co.za or send a WhatsApp text to 082-594-9988. The church has made available a confidential spiritual support line at 060-501-7046, mostly for counseling. Please note that you can request to be called back on the line and it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To continue advancing the kingdom of God, you're encouraged to continue giving your tithes and offerings via SnapScan or through direct deposit as per the details on the screen. A heartfelt welcome to those attending House of Destiny Family Church for the first time. Our HOD members are excited to connect with you after the service and provide insights into our community. Kindly complete the card distributed during the service. Thank you for joining us today. We trust you'll have a great time fellowshipping with us. House of Destiny Family Church, taking you 
to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints. Hallelujah. Can we be excited this morning? Hallelujah. It's so good to be here. You are all greeted in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming through in this uh, off-site weather. Hallelujah. Um, I'm here just to do a couple of things. But before that, I just want to thank Mfundisi, Noma Mfundisi, for the opportunity to stand in front of you. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege. And uh, thank all the pastors and the leaders of the church for allowing me to be here. Hallelujah. Um, just uh, two things I would do. Welcome. So, and secondly, I will just uh, give a, a, a brief update on the state of the art uh, worship center and then we'll offer and move on hallelujah uh, is there anyone who's here with us for the very first time we just want to acknowledge you love you and uh, welcome you can you just rise up wherever you are so that we can see you stand up stand up stand up stand up hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an honor and privilege that you have decided to fellowship with us this morning. Um, Pastor Musa and the leadership, we just want to thank you for availing yourself this morning. We believe that you are going to have an impactful Sunday. And the ushers have given you a form that you can just complete and then put it in the offering basket when we offer. Hallelujah. On Fundis, we give instructions at the end of the service uh, regarding the special thing that we have for you. Hallelujah. And we welcome those uh, who are joining us online. Thank you. Thank you for being with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Tim, can, can you help me with, with, with the presentation? Uh, Bazalani, here is just to, to, to make sure that all of us who are on the same page with regards to where we are, the work that we, we have been doing in the background to make sure that we do move into a state-of-the-art worship center. Um, Umfundisi has, has, has proclaimed that this year is a year of o open doors. I think the atmosphere and the environment of open doors is there. It's for, for us to make sure that we act on our faith and then we move to where we are supposed to be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, this is just a recap so that all of us are aligned and as, as we heard that at the end of the month we'll be having an offering towards the, uh, the worship center. It's just for you to understand where we are and, uh, and, and then so that uh, we, we, we move fo forward together. The other thing that I will say is that as we move forward, there will be a lot of build up towards what we are doing. So you will hear more about uh, our state of the art worship center in Jesus name. Amen. Um, so, on, on the 19th of November last year, um, there was an AGM here at church where uh, the Board of Elders uh, made a presentation to, to the church about where we are with the search, with regards to the search of our building. Uh, and uh, two proposals were put forward, and uh, the one of them was uh, Summit Road uh, a property. Um, where we did mention that um, um, we, we, we were able to, to, to locate the, the property through, through a, a, an agent. And uh, the seller there uh, wanted 21 million, excluding VAT, for, for the property. And the church did give us a mandate to pursue that and, and make an offer and see where, where it takes us. So that was 19th of November um, last year. And then on, on the, before we could uh, uh, make an offer, there's some groundwork that we needed to do to make sure that we, we whatever that we offer, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, there are independent experts that have advised us, have made an opinion on that. So we commissioned the evaluator, a property evaluator to just to assess the property and give us an independent view of how much is the property worth. 
uh, uh, that, that was commissioned um, um, uh, um, uh, late in November, and then 14th of December, they came back to us with the evaluation, saying that uh, the, according to what the property has and the location and everything that is uh, associated with it, it came to a value of 12.5 uh, million. Uh, so that was uh, December, just before we went on holidays. And, and then early January, due to the holidays and everything, then we had to engage the, uh, engage with the board, uh, engage uh, with the legal team, engage with, um, with the agent that has helped us to locate the property uh, so that we can be able to, 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 to determine uh, what price to put on the offer to purchase. Um, and, and that offer to purchase was going to have um, a, a number of all substantive conditions, the main one being zoning. So that was um, um, early, early January when we came back. Um, and then mid-February, um, uh, mid, um, uh, we, we, we made the offer to, to the seller um, uh, to the value of, of 15 million, which is uh, 2.5 million above the valuation. Um, which gives you a, a, a premium of more than 20%. Uh, that was mid-February. Uh, and then on um, 18 of March, uh, the seller responded to us uh, saying that he, he's giving us 18 and he had a number of conditions that were attached to the 18 million. Um, so the, the time here, Bazaar, you could see that it, it has been taking long. The seller is uh, probably 90% of the time based in Portugal. So getting hold of him, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. But when he does, it does uh, come back here, he does give us the time to, to engage on this. So then on the 18th of March, he, he, he said 18 million with a number of conditions. Um, so we had to engage the board. Uh, just to, to, to go through those conditions. I think there are about 10 of them. Uh, the main one being zoning. Uh, zoning is so important because in, in whatever property that we move into, it must be a property that we can do what we do. Amen. It must be zoned as a place of worship. Hallelujah. So we, we, we engage the board and, uh, and, the, and the legal team just to make sure that uh, in those conditions or, 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 or the conditions that has given us, we are able to respond appropriately and we make sure that we cover the church, we don't expose the church. So we went back to him with 16.5 million. That was on Thursday. So that's where we are, Bazalane. We have put forward 16.5 million on the table, which we believe is a reasonable offer. Uh, and then this 16.5 is at a premium of 32%. So it's quite important here, Bazarane, that we make sure that we, 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 we go for the right price. We don't want to overpay for something that is not worth what it is. So we have to make sure that the price that we pay, because a building, you acquire it with the hope that at a certain point you'll be able to build equity. So we must make sure that this building at the center point does get us the necessary equity so that if in future we want to do something with it or we want to raise more finance through the bank via it, we are able to do that. So we believe 16.5 million is the right price. So we are waiting for him to respond on that. But we have told him that this is where we stand right now. And this is based on the valuation. We have moved from 15 to 16.5. You have to move to 16.5 too, from 18 to 16.5 million. Amen. Amen. So that's where we are. We require your prayers. We require your faith. We require your belief. We require your stubbornness. We require everything from all of us. Amen. Amen. We are moving to our state of the art worship center. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, secondly, Bazalani, while we are busy with that, there's still work in progress that we are doing because we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. So as we are pushing hard on Summit Road, we are also exploring, exploring other avenues where we can be able probably to, 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 
to, to, to, to find a, 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 an appropriate venue if, 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 if this does take time or it does not happen as we want it to happen. And also we have to make sure that we, we, we sort out um, the, the issue that we continuously have in this place why, where we are being inconvenienced. So we are also looking for other uh, temporal venues that we can use in the meantime while we are looking for our long-term solution. Amen. So the team is busy on the lookout of other buildings, of other places that might be available for us uh, to, 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 to go for them. And there are a number of, 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 of temporary venues that we've been looking for around this area for us to, to be able to rent while we are, we are on transition to our main venue. So we have, we have gone to Focus Room in Rimbrook Park just to see what they can offer. It's a beautiful venue, it's big enough to accommodate us. Um, it, it's, it's not going to cause much of an inconvenience from here to Limbro Park, but the price for, for that venue on a monthly basis is just too much, so it's, it's not possible for, for us to move into. We've considered self C in Barclou for us to be able to move into uh, um, uh, due to some complexes with regards to, to the owner there who won't be able to do that. So we are continuously looking for, for places that we can use for, 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 for the short term in the meantime. Um, so so we, the team is hard at work. The team is out there and inquiring and, and, and putting ourselves to make sure that we are able to locate what belongs to us. Amen. As it has been highlighted by Zolani, that's on the 28th, it's, it's, it's our offering for, for the building. Um, and uh, uh, let's go there with excitement. There will be a video that will be played after, after I leave the stage uh, that is building up to that. Uh, and, uh, and above all, we just want to thank you, Bazalani, for your commitment and dedication. Um, it, it says it's been tough financially. We know how the country, uh, in fact, the global economy is like the inflation, the higher interest rate, and all those sorts of things. We know that households are under pressure on a number of fronts. But we just want to thank you for your dedication. For the three collections that we had last year, we are able to raise two million. We are able to raise two million for the three collections that we had last year. We just want to thank you, Fundis, for all of you guys. We just want to thank you for your dedication, not just on rebuilding, on the offering, on your tithes. Your commitment, always being there, showing up in tough times. We just want to thank you. May the good Lord richly bless you. May the good Lord richly bless you. As I said earlier on, I think it's upon us now to put our action behind the faith that we have. If we look at the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After she had heard, she decided that she will put this last hope that she had. Only if she had no other option. Hence, there's only in the verse. Only if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She wanted to put action behind the faith. It is our turn, Bazalan. This worship center is not for us. It's for our kids, our grandkids, for the next generation. Amen. We don't want our kids to say, oh, we are renting. What did daddy and mommy do? Hallelujah. It is our turn to put our action where our faith is. But, but, but above all, Bazalan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for commitment. We appreciate it. It makes this place be the place that Ngunkuru wanted it to be. Hallelujah. As we offer, you'll offer as the video plays. I just want us to stand up, hold our seat in our hand. I'll just make a short prayer. Then thereafter, the video will play. After the video, the worship team will come to the fore. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for your loving kindness.
for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Above all, Father, we just want to thank you for these precious people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for planting them into this local church. We give you praise, we give you thanks, Father. We know it has not been easy, but Father, they continuously show up, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that you bless them, Father. You supply all their needs according to thy riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father. And every tongue, Father, that rises up against them in judgment, Father, we are able to condemn it, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you thanks, Father, for who you are in our lives. We worship you, Lord. Thank you that you are a risen king in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to today's special edition of HOD News. My name is Viola Zitebe and I'm your host. And I'm Ngobi Mak. And glory to the Lord, we have some news for you today. Absolutely, Ngobi. We are here to talk about the most exciting thing happening in our church. the House of Destiny State of the Art Worship Center. You heard it here first, Saints. This is not any old building. This is a majestic worship center that's excellent in all aspects. That's right. Now let's hear from our underground correspondents who has all the juicy details mm -hmm. about the state of the art worship center. Matimu, what's the buzz on the ground? <laughs> Thank you, VM Nobi. Listen. We are very much excited about the state of the art worship center. There's excitement going all around. Listen, listen, listen. I hear that they say there's going to be helipads for our helicopters and jets. There's going to be cafeterias for us coffeetarians. There's going to be, you know, a whole lot of things. But that's just hearsay. The excitement, it's, it feels like the 2010 FIFA World Cup all over again. But guess what? We are there. Okay, I'm not sure how accurate that is, weatherman, but definitely sounds like something to look forward to. Tell us, what is the weather looking like for the big fundraising happening on the 28th of April, 2024? Let me tell you, it's going to be a glorious day. We've got sunny skies, warm temperatures, and a high chance of blessings raining on us on the 28th of April. Over to you, Mpari. Sounds like perfect weather to come out and support, don't you think? You got that right, Mpadi. Don't forget to bring your sunscreens because money and pledges will be surely bringing out the heat. Also, also, I hear that our friends there by Waterfall, they've went to the gym. They will be bringing the heat for four ways. We don't know if that's true, but guess what? We'll find out on the 28th of April. Thank you for that forecast, my demo. Now back to our main story. Any final words for our viewers? Thank you, Biogas. Remember, saints, it's not the giving of the few, but the sacrifice of many. So let's roll up our sleeves, open our hearts, and let's build this state-of-the-art worship center that is going to be a blessing for generations to come. From all of us here at HOD News, we'd like mm -hmm. to thank you for tuning in. With that being said, please remember we are transforming lives, impacting communities, and advancing the kingdom of God. With that being said, good day and God bless. It's also a good day for me. God bless.
May I ask that to rise on our feet and just give God all the glory. He's worthy of all honor. yesterday, today, and forever. We give you praise, we give you glory. Can we just exalt his name? Can we magnify the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the one who is and the one who is to come. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Moshe Nderebekaya, Leremelia Satya Kenderebejeam, Larimetia Kanderebezelia Satya Kenderebejeam, Ila mazia la badio konda la bajea, silareti ya kande rebeshi ya manda la bajoya, brelesi ya kate lejea samandi ya la bakorea, 
Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Moleleva Sayajea, Likramelia Satya Kenderebejea, Larimetia Kandarabajea. Let's give him our heartfelt worship. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's love him. Let's tell him how wonderful he is, how glorious he is. He is from eternity to eternity. He is the great I am, the loving God, the loving Father. Ilarabasia take him in the rebejea la babonde rebejea. Iliria la babasa da la bajea la banda la bakea. Lirebea la babose de rebeboya la bayen de rebeboya la bayan de la babo. Ilerebeboya la bayen de rebeboya la bayen de rebeboya la bayan. Rende rebeboya la yen de rebeboya la yan de la baboya la bayen. give God a hand of praise. Can we give the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, the one who is? Hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? We thank you, mighty God. Amen and amen. We can take our seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We greet you, beloved, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you please tell your neighbor when Zegashewafigala? It is good to have you at church this morning. Hallelujah. I think the other neighbor is more interested than the one you just spoke to. Please tell the other neighbor that seeing that you are the one more interested in talking to me. When Zega Ate Wafiga Nawe Ekamen Legachis. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for the progress on the state of the art worship center. And we encourage that we continue to pray, trust God, and it can only be God who takes us to our state of the art worship center. Amen. Please say after me, it can only be God. Hallelujah. And then on the 28th, we'll be giving and we encourage Abba Zalwane to partner with your Destiny Connect group. Uh, if you don't have one, you can contact me. I'll direct you to the one that is fertile ground in the name of Jesus. That your seed will germinate and bear fruit a hundred, a thousand fold harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, and it's been said, it's not the giving of uh, the few, or it's not the giving of the one, but it's the sacrifice of the many. So, your giving matters. Uh, irrespective of the amount, your giving matters, and we are all building. And Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're starting a new series this morning, this coming weeks, and we've entitled The Genius of God. Please say after me, The Genius of God. And the key and the anchor scripture for the series uh, is found in Psalms 147, verse 5, and I'd like us to read it in the TPT, the Amplified, and the New King James. Hallelujah. 
And once Abazalwane confirmed that they've bought classic amplified, I'll ask for classic amplified. So we'll start with TPT, Psalms 147, verse 5. The Bible says, how great is our God. God's absolutely, or there's absolutely nothing his power cannot accomplish. And he has infinite understanding of everything. The Bible says the God that we serve has infinite understanding of everything. He's got infinite understanding. So the Amplified Version says, Great is our majestic and mighty Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is inexhaustible, infinite and boundless. So his understanding, his knowledge and remember, understanding is the highest form of knowledge. And the lowest form of knowledge is assumption. So when you live your life on the basis of assumption, that's the lowest form of knowledge. You assume, I like this. You assume the person would be happy with this. Uh, it may happen that they are. It may happen that they are not. But understanding is the highest form of knowledge. No wonder why God... Uh, the scripture, I think it's First Peter 3, 7, speaks of the fact that husbands dwell with your wife according to understanding, not according to assumption. Husbands, likewise, it's interesting that uh, to a husband, not necessarily wives, but husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. So don't assume. Okay, I see Kogege, go husband and wife. But I just now assume, giving honor to the wife as a weaker vessel and being as together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. But it's interesting that God advises, the scripture advises for husband to dwell according to understanding, which is dwell according to the highest form of knowledge, not dwell according to the lowest form of knowledge. So relationships and, and friendships and in this context, marriages seem to work when people, particularly husbands, dwell with understanding. Please say after me, understanding. So the scripture then, let's go back to Psalms 147 verse 8. The, the, the New King James says, great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. So, he is he understanding his, his knowledge is infinite. His knowledge has no limits. Actually, other version, I think it's the old King James. It says his understanding has no limits. So he's in Dunkunkulu Azazio, is in Dunkunkulu Awazukzenza. The Bible says it knows no limits. Knows no limits. Of course, just to make sure that we are clear and we know that we are safe with theologians in the house and those that are watching online, the genius of God, of course, is not like we are relegating Unkurunkulu to the knowledge of human understanding. The genius of God is not necessarily a theological term, uh, but it can be interpreted in the religious context, uh, and we are safe. So we can speak of uh, no unlimitless knowledge, and not necessarily, you know, you're not going to find it in, in the Bible, in the scripture. I mean, there's, I can understand But when we speak of the genius of God, ultimately we are giving expression and interpretation of God's unlimited wisdom and intelligence. So God's unlimited wisdom and intelligence that surpasses human understanding. So God's knowledge, God's wisdom, uh, God's uh, understanding is infinite. It knows no bounds. It knows no limitations. It is speaking about the, wis the ultimate wisdom of God. And, 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 and I'll tell you why this is important. It inspires our faith. It inspires uh, our heart and our desire and our hunger to always go to God knowing that the God that we serve is a God whose ultimate wisdom knows no bounds. 
So I can do kunukula And we can actually find that expression, particularly in the life of the person of Jesus, where we see the genius of God. Which is where we're going to read today in John chapter 5. He went into the pool of Bethsaida. And when he saw a man who had been there for 38 years, then he knew that he was there for a long time. So he did not have to be told. The Bible says, and, and actually when you speak about the nine gifts in the body of Christ, that's the gift of knowledge in operation at that time through Christ Jesus. The Bible says he knew that he had been there for a long period of time. Actually, when you read John chapter 6, he asked Philip, Philip, where are we going to buy in how are you going to get enough food so that these people can eat? Then the Bible says he asked Philip already knowing what he would do. So, Unkulukulo was here. Unjan Basalwane, please say after me, God knows. So, I can tell you there's nothing that God does not know. He knows every issue of, of our lives, He knows everything about our lives. Even the things that you don't other, want other people to know. But the God that you serve is a God who's got ultimate wisdom and intelligence. And that's the genius of God that we're speaking about. Knowing what he would do. But the God that you serve, the God that you serve is God who has got ultimate wisdom. So when we speak of the genius of God, we are speaking of God's knowledge and wisdom that are infinite. Asnam kaulo. You can't limit them. You can't box them. So meaning, he will do whatever he needs to do to make sure that you and I achieve what he wants us to achieve. When we speak of the genius of God, it is really an evidence. We're speaking of God's power, God's greatness. We're speaking of him leading and guiding us. No wonder Isaiah 48 verse 17, the Bible says he is the God who teaches us to profit. He leads us by the way to go. So, Basalwane, we serve a living God. Of course, we celebrated the fact that he is risen. We celebrated this is post-resurrection. We celebrated the fact that he rose up from the, from the dead, went out of the grave. The tomb is empty. But we serve a God whose knowledge, whose wisdom, whose understanding knows no bounds. So we can live our lives see secured. We are not left not knowing what to do because the God that we serve knows it all. Unparalleled wisdom. God of creativity. God of understanding. And as I said, our response should inspire our faith. How are we going to get to the state of the art worship center? But the God that we serve Knowing that he knows no bounds, knowing that his understanding is limitless, we then can be safe and, ass and, and, and assured. As I said last week, we, uh, there's nothing that, calls that speaks dead end into our lives. There's nothing that says dead end in your life, child of God. There's nothing that says dead end in your life. Because Nganze Uguti... Based on our human understanding, based on our human comprehension, things may say, but because we serve a God who is a genius, we serve a God who is creative, we serve a God whose wisdom, understanding is limitless, he creates a way where there seems to be no way. He opens waters uh, that needs to come out from uh, the rocks. When, when water has to come out from unlikely sources, it will come out from the unlikely sources. If it looks like you are limited, you don't know how to get into the next level of your life, he will open a way, even if it means you need to go through the Red Sea. Even if it means you have to go through River Jordan. Even if it means he provides for you through the ravens. Ravens are the most, most greedy and the greediest of the, of the bids. 
I will provide for you from likely and unlikely sources. Because he's a genius God. Hallelujah. He's a genius God. Please say after me, he's a genius God. And when we speak about the genius of God, not only are we speaking about his creativity, understanding, but we're speaking about the omniscient God. I'm sure this would sound familiar and sound much more comfortable to the Christian community. He's an all-knowing God. He's an all-knowing God. God knows everything that is happening. God knows what has happened. God knows what will happen. So your past, your present, and your future, they are lying bare in his gaze. He knows it. So we serve a God that knows. We serve a God that knows. Job chapter 37, verse 16. Job marvels at God's perfect knowledge. Do you know that the clouds hang poised? Those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge. So God has perfect knowledge. God has perfect knowledge. You know, Basarad, it's okay for you and I not to know. It's okay for you and I not to know how are you going to get to the next project. It's okay for you and I not to know how we're going to finance the next project. It's okay for you and I not to know how are we going to be able to get through to the next level of our lives, in any area of our lives. But the God that we serve has perfect knowledge. Because we are human beings, because we are normal, ordinary people, the truth of the matter is we serve a God who has perfect knowledge. Then we can be inspired and be in awe to go all out and look out for the fact that he is the God who has perfect knowledge. Look at what David says in Psalms 139. We'll read verse 1 to verse 4. Just building, uh, just building uh, uh, you know, background to what we're talking about. Psalms 139. For the director of news, oh Lord, you have, yes, oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know my sitting down. So, so you search me and God says, I know you. Then God says, I know you're sitting down and I know you're rising up. You're, you understand my thoughts. So David says, you understand my thoughts from afar. So I know you sit down, I know you rise up, I understand your thoughts. Verse 3 says, Oh, Lord, you have searched me. We're reading too many versions. You comprehend my path. And, okay, where are we reading now? Oh, verse 3. Can I read my Bible? Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and you know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern, or you discern my going out and my lying down. And you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know, oh Lord, you know completely. So he's a God who knows and has perfect knowledge. He knows completely. He knows completely. So child of God, I don't know what you don't know, but the fact that you serve a God that knows you can be assured that you will land safely wherever you're going. Whatever God has asked you to do, whatever God wants to do through your life, you may not know, but the God that you serve, we ask you, and I'm going to say hi. You may not know how you're going to pay for your bills, but you know, we ask. Lisa, let us go to Psalm 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Your father knows that you need these things before you ask. Little before you even ask, the father knows. Please say after me, my father knows. Please say after me, my father knows. So it's good to serve a God that knows. You know, one of the challenging things when you try to do anything, I'm sure you've heard this expression, a blind, blind leading the blind. It's one of the difficult things when all of you are trying to find a way and no one seems to know where to go. But it is okay for you and I not to know. 
as long as we know who knows. It is okay for you and I to have limited understanding. How are we going to do what we need to do? But we know that we may, as human beings, we may be limited, but the God we serve has perfect knowledge. He has perfect knowledge for your family. He has perfect knowledge for your business. He has perfect knowledge for your career. He has perfect knowledge as it relates to your children. He has perfect knowledge of everything that you and I will ever have to accomplish because he is God. God above every other thing. Listen, this is going to be the end. I'm going to be a king of peace. I'm going to be a king of peace. Indela zake zinkulu zinkulu unguli indela zetu. So I'm going to say, Kaya, you are safe with God. Your family is safe with God. Your career is safe with God. It is okay for you not to know, but I can tell you your children are safe with God because you serve a God who has perfect knowledge. You serve a God who has all knowledge and understanding. His understanding knows no bounds. But let us actually see the genius of God in the story, particularly in the life of Jesus, but in a story found in John chapter 5. And I'd encourage you to read the whole of chapter, John chapter 5, but we'll read a couple of verses, and then we'll shut down. Hallelujah. So this is the second quarter of 2024. Hallelujah. So one of the commitments that I have made, and I'm making it here, is that we back on time. So song is hambang is cut, my Bazalan. Sinjan Bazalane. Song is Sinjani. Hallelujah. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so if you look at our screens, our screens they tell people in front here that your time is up. And I'll appreciate everyone who comes up front here to respect. That, that when your time is up, it means your time is? Up. Hallelujah. The pastor included. So we're building a culture. Just getting our age is Pumang or 10. Until such time we change the knock of time. So we don't have to try and finish the Bible in one service. Even if we try, we're not going to be able to do that. So if you've been asked to do something here and you see time up, it is okay to say the time is up and I am wrapping. I'm not wrapping up. Uh, it's time to steward, to sit down. Is it okay, Bazalan? Is it okay? Hallelujah. We can't get to the state of the art worship center with all sorts of behaviors. Hallelujah. And Moise will pick up next week. Or we'll pick up in the next service. Hallelujah. Amen. I love the way you look at me. I want Hallelujah. Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. So it's interesting that Jesus is getting to Jerusalem. It's a very important, very important verse. And please don't be familiar with the scripture. It's actually quite a lot of things that are here. But the sermon for today, fun enough, is from verse 14 to the end of the chapter, but we'll read verse 1 to verse 13. Now there is in Jerusalem, near a sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great multitude of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there, one who, had, who was there had been an invalid for 38 years, close to four decades. Very important scripture, verse 6. And look at the progression here. The scripture says, Jesus saw him lying there, 
Remember, Jesus is coming to the feast of the Jews, not necessarily coming to, to this man, but he's coming to the feast of the Jews, and when he comes to the feast of the Jews, he gets into the pool where these people who had been, who had been invalid or who had been disabled were there. Jesus went in there. One, he saw him lying there. Number two, he learned that he had been there in that condition for a long time, and he asked him a question. Do you want to get well? Actually, Jesus is asking a question. Not do you wish to get well. Do you want to get well? Because some of the things in our lives, they require more than a wish. Your desire to be healed needs to be much more than the pain of that disease. Jesus actually is telling us that sometimes, no matter how much you want things for people, but people need to want things for themselves. You have to want it for yourself more than other people want it for you. You see, I can tell you sometimes, Abanyabandi, you need to leave them where they are until they get to a point where they want it themselves. You can pray for them, you can encourage them, but some people need to want to succeed their desire to want to succeed need to be there. They need to get there for themselves. Because no matter how much you want it for them, if they don't want it for themselves, it's not going to happen. So that's why Jesus is saying, I can understand, but do you want to get well? And he often asks the question, he asks Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? I can understand everyone is talking about this, but what do you want me to do for you? He's a very personal God. He's a very personal God. And even here we see how personal he is. He gets into a crowd. He gets into a place where there are many people. And God says, he sees a man. He identifies them. And he says, even though there's a crowd, but I can deal with you as an individual because I'm a personal God. The man says, I have no one to put me in when the water is stirred up. Verse 8 says, Jesus says, get up, pick up your bed and walk. It's actually very, very interesting. Jesus could have said, get up and walk. But his genius leads him to say, pick up your mat. Not only get up, but pick up your mat. Which is why I can save you, but you still have a responsibility to pick up your net. Which is why you can't be too saved to forget your children. You may not be with the mother of a child or the father of the child, but the reality is the mat is yours. You're not too saved to move away from your mat. You can't be praying in tongues and telling us, uh, the Lord from the mountain and eating sushi at the, at the incentive, but your kids, you are, pick up your mat. <laughs> but Alan, we need to clear these things up. We, we, we have to be responsible individuals, responsible Christians, responsible believers. We do what? We pick up. You're not too safe to forget your mat. At once, and of course, Jesus is saying eight words according to this version that heals a man that had an issue for 38 years. Eight words, only eight. And as it's been said before, some of us, I mean, if we knew that we're going to, uh, God was going to use us to heal the man, I mean, we would have like, when we in we are from eternity to eternity. Totally lap on sick. Umbizum, couldn't call umbizum, couldn't call. Aye, Uchesu, get up, take up your bed, and walk. And the Bible says, at once the man was healed. But of course, it was the Sabbath, and of course, the religious people are having an issue about the fact that Jesus healed the man on a Sabbath, and they ask a question. Who, why are you doing this? Why are you working? Because picking up your mat was seen as work. Why are you doing this? 
And actually, that is where the genius of Jesus comes in. The man says, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. I, was, I, I thought about this. I mean, we're talking about the genius of Jesus, so I'm sure we can engage our minds and think. Why would Jesus pick up only this guy out of the many people? The Bible already said they are sick, they are lame, they are paralyzed, but why would he pick up only this guy? Why was it important for Jesus to pick up this guy? And, num and number two, a question is, Jesus, remember, he's coming into Jerusalem to the feast of the Jews. He's not coming to this man, but he gets into this place. And the Bible says Jesus only engages once he had seen the man. He's not coming to the man. Once he had seen him and knowing that he had been there for a long time, then Jesus starts to engage with him. Why? Can we stretch this? Most of the people you find Jesus heal, all, if not, let me say not all of them, most of them, they actually came to Jesus. But Machola spoke about one. The woman with the issue of blood, she came to Jesus saying, only if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. People came to Jesus, but in this instance, Jesus went to the men. So Jesus is not, the man is not coming to Jesus. But why is Jesus picking up on this man? Why is Jesus picking up on this man? Maybe before we answer that question, look at the environment the man is found at. This man is found in an environment where people have no names. People are called, are labeled by what they are going through. People are called by their sickness and disease. People are called by what they are going through. And Jesus comes in. And as a matter of fact, it is it, it's so many people in Scripture that are labeled by their nameless individuals. They are labeled by what they are going through. But I want to challenge you, child of God. Never allow anyone, including yourself, to call, and give you, call you and give you an identity that is not in line with the word of God. You may be going through sickness, but we are not that. You may be going through unemployment, but we are not that. You may be going through an issue now, but you are not that. You are a child of God. You are an apple of God's eye. You are fearful and wonderfully made. You are God's champion. You are a joint heir with Christ. Always know that you must give yourself a label that God has given you. He said you are my child. He said you are an apple of God's eye. You may have gone through divorce. You may have gone through unemployment. You may be going through sickness, but you are not that. You may have gone through failure. You may be going through fault, but you are not what you are going through. You are who God says you are. Please say after me, I am the righteousness of God. I am bought by the, by the precious blood of Jesus. I am God's champion. I am more than a conqueror. You always have to give yourself an identity that God has given it to you. But Jesus goes into a place of the forgotten and the forsaken. Those that did not fit. He goes to this place and he went to those that had infirmity and labels as I said. Because he knows. I mean, Mazalan, these weeks, I would like us to know Ugutige, he knows. When you cry secret tears at night, not knowing what to do, he knows. When you have issues at work, when you've got issues in your business, he knows. When you don't know how you're going to find whatever you need to do, he knows. And when he gets into this place, Mazalan, he gets into this place, because he has no limitations. He picks up the most difficult job around. He picks up the most difficult job around. Because he's a genius. Because he knows. Actually, let me give you as a spoil, as a movie spoiler alert. Let me give you the answer why Jesus spoke, picked up this man. Three things. The reason why he picked up this guy is because this guy had been there for 38 years and everyone knew that when he is healed, he would be healed. It's not fake healing. So the man had been there for 38 years. So when he's healed, he's properly, truly, truly healed. It's not a staged kind of a healing. 
and everyone knew him. I mean, more, I mean, if he's been there for 38 years. Remember, the Bible says he was carried by his friends for 38 years coming into this place. So when this man is healed, he's genuinely healed. And number two, why Jesus picked him up is because this man had no option to get healed because even he says, I have no one. Can you remember, of course, I mean, you're not going to get into the theology of uh, the staring up of the water. Everyone who could get closer to the pool would be closer to the pool except for this guy. Because it's like, whatever position I get, I can't get there faster or get there quicker. So he, it's more like his position had already been determined that he will never be able to walk. And number three, Jesus, at the later verses, Jesus speaks to him. He says, go sin no more. So not only is he healing him of his infirmity, but he's healing him of his sin. That may have put him there for the past 38 years. But interestingly, Barcelona, God, Jesus is saying, for me to get the attention of the people around, I'm coming in as no one, but for me to get the attention of the people around, I need to do the dirtiest job around here. Then they ask a question, who told you? And the Bible says, the man said, I don't know, but the man who, say, who healed me. And of course, there from verse 14 to the end of the chapter, a discussion that Jesus is having as a result of healing a man that no one thought will ever be healed. Can I just challenge you, child of God? I don't know what looks impossible in your life. I don't know what looks like it will never change in your life. I don't know what looks like it will never come to an end in your life. But Uncle he is able to do immeasurably more than what we can ask, think, or imagine. And he knows how he will take you through Mdanasekaya. He knows what he will need to do. He knows who he needs to talk to. When you may not know, but he knows because he is a God who is the genius. He shows up in this place, Bazalwan. When he shows up, the Bible firstly says he sees the man because he sees further. The God that you serve, he says, We are born on Gurungurum than a Sekaya, Utisimo Sako Sinjani. We are born on details of thinking of Pegan and Ayo. We are born on Utige, Gupogun at Niger Zuglala, Gupogun at Niger Zuktula. He sees it. We are born because he sees further than everyone around. Sometimes the pastor does not see or does not understand the living God, the great I am, the lion of Judah, the God who's above everything. We are born. We Aren't you glad that he sees? Aren't you glad that he sees? Jesus says, do you want to get better? The man gives an answer. He says, I don't have anyone. Let me challenge you again. It's always important not to answer on the opportunities that God opens for you on the basis of the reality you are going through. Because you can... That can, the answers we give can easily limit God. Because God is saying, do you want to get better? The man says, I have no one. It's more like God saying, I'm giving you an opportunity to get better. Then the man says, you know what, even if you were to give me an opportunity, because, because the way I need to get better is for me to get into the water. And I don't have anyone who can take me to, into the water and be healed. Be the first one to be healed. As the water is stirred up. Poverty may be your current reality. But it is not an excuse for you not to give. I really believe that God is opening up opportunities for us. That will require us not to respond on the basis of our current reality. 
Please, I'm done. I say, I'm going to beg you. I'm going to beg you. I'm going to Don't look at where you come from, where you are, what you are able to do, what, has, what, what people have said about you. When God opens up doors, when God opens up opportunities, always be prepared to respond as God would want you to. Not like I don't have anyone, not that I don't have a degree, not that I don't know anyone, not that I don't have any connection. When God challenges you to do things, just continue to do what God is calling you and not limit what God wants to do in your life, through your life on the basis of your current realities. As I said in Isaiah 48 verse 17, thus saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. God says I will teach you to profit. I will teach you to increase. I will teach you to make money. I will teach you to get to another level. He said I take responsibility to teach you. He said I will lead you by the way you should go. Lead you by the way you should go. I will lead you by the way you should go. That's the genius of God. Don't allow your current reality to limit what God can do in your life. Don't allow the current reality to limit what God can do in your life and through your life. It says, I have no man. But the most important thing as we close is that Jesus comes into this place. Firstly, he sees him. Secondly, he knows that he had been there for a long time. And thirdly, Jesus speaks to him. The name Bethsaida means mercy. But all that had been happening in this place, Bazalan, it's no mercy at all. Bethsaida means house of mercy. But what had been happening here all along before Jesus shows up has been the house of merit. You get healed on the basis of your merit. You get healed on the basis of how strong you are. You get healed on the basis of how quick you can get to the water. You get healed on the basis of how quick people can help you get there first. It is merit, not mercy. But when Jesus shows up, he says, I'm not looking for those who are the, who, who the survival of the fetus. I'm not looking for those who it is only you that can be helped by other people. He says, I will show you mercy. I will heal you even if I don't take you into the water. I will do in your life what people... Th- I mean, he's changing rules and regulations. He's changing ways in which he had been healing other people before. Why? Because his wisdom, his generosity, his mercy says I will change merit to mercy. It's not the survival of the fetus. I can tell him, Danaseka, you may have been excluded on the basis of your background. You may have been excluded on the basis of your education. You may have been excluded on the basis of who you know. But this morning, I am speaking about the God of mercy. I am speaking about the one who is able to change rules and regulations and say, I want you to experience my favor. I want you to experience my grace. I want you to experience the fact that you are loved. You don't have to pay form you don't have to do anything but i want to give you my mercy i want to give you my grace and to give you my grace the expert showed up in the environment of the invalid he picked up the toughest case a man that had been sick for close to four decades And the man began to do what he had not done in 38 years. First time experiences. I don't know what had not happened for you in years. But we decree, declare and allow and invoke the genius of God to do in your life 
what had not happened in your life forever, what had not happened in your life in the last 10 years, what had not happened in your life in the last 20 years, but we speak the genius of God. Who would you experience first time miracle, first time promotions, first time opening of doors, first time isn't as nagas as then but the mercy of God at work in your life, not because of your performance, not because you are the strongest, not because you are the fastest, not because because you are the cleverest, not because you are the wisest, not because of anything, but because of the genius of God. First time experiences. First time experiences. Oh. And the reason why Jesus says, take up your mat, he says, I want you to carry the testimony. Which is the very same thing that used to be that used to ground you. The very same thing that used to ground you, that used to define you, that used to be a limitation. That I want to be I want you to carry as a testimony. But Jesus said, I want you to carry this as a testimony so that people will know that only God who saves, only God who heals has done this only god 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 has done this brothers and sisters can i just ask you one thing can you give your current condition and your situation what i call a second opinion give it a god opinion Give it an opinion from Unkulunkula. But you say, Jenine, Uguti, if it's this Nako, it's not going to go anywhere. Your career is not going to go anywhere. Your family is not going to go anywhere. But this morning, we're speaking about the house of mercy. Ola Rababo, Shiandere Bejele says. Thank you, Father God, we thank you that you are God who's all knowing. You are God who knows it all. You are God who knows it all, Heavenly Father. Lasting and sick corner when we are in Gosiamakos. We have limitation. We know that you are God whose understanding knows no bounds. Your understanding, Heavenly God, is inexhaustible. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You know how to help us navigate. You know how to get out of situations. You know what to help us, how to do what we need to do, Lord God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I want us to surrender to the name above every other name, the name of Jesus. Call the genius who's able to put together all the broken pieces of our lives back together where they belong. When we embrace his grace and embrace his mercy, he helps us to conquer giants that we face on our paths. And we can seek for second opinion, God's opinion to every situation that we are faced with. In the name above every other name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand of praise? Can we celebrate the fact that He knows? Can we celebrate the fact that He knows? Can we celebrate the fact that He's an all knowing God? He's an all knowing God. 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 He's an all-knowing God. He's an all-knowing God. He's an all-knowing God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory, mighty God. We thank you, Father. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Can we just take our seats for a second? But just know that he's the God who knows. You can just remember that today, this week, we are we are we are we are we are we are it's okay for you we are we are we are we are we are we are so, uh, brothers and sisters that have visited us for the first time, our special guest, we'll ask you to please take your belongings and go to the back of the auditorium so that you can meet with our care team. And see a bonga cool. Yes, you can come through, brother. Joe. And then we'll be. Tell us, Bashali Zanja Basalana Besapuma. Thank you very much. And may God richly, richly, richly bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you for visiting us and we are grateful that you'll be here uh, again next week and the week after. God bless you. Amen. Uh, we're doing a raffle for the uh, Destiny Impact. So there were three prizes and we'll just call out for those that have won and if your number or your name, please connect with the office. And we are grateful to Abba Zalwane who have given in Ama prizes. And may God richly, richly bless you. Hallelujah. This is the first prize. This is a prize, a holiday, a weekend in Devon. Hallelujah. Temba Silani. Okay, so Devon Price is gone in the name of Jesus. Petrol or diesel voucher and Zima. Upalun Zima. Let's challenge in Zande Kamen Elgachis. Uh, the answer is uh, spa voucher for two. So spa voucher for 
One and the plus one. No Lutan don't go best. So no Lutando Unzima as well as Utemba. Uh, you most welcome to collect your prizes. Thank you very much for being part of the Destiny Impact. And may God richly, richly bless you. You are blessed and you are highly favored. Amen and amen. Oh, oh. 